All right, YouTube, this is a special video targeted to the militia audience for the California State Militia. I had some new recruits kind of ask me what kind of gear they should be getting as starting off. And um, I'm going to quickly go through the gear that I have uh, acquired to date. But this is, you know, not the, the recommendation. Obviously, um, the best best way to look at it is everybody should acquire their own gear and custom to their own selves and how uh, they like to carry and run their gear so I'll suggest that the very minimum start off with the, the clothing a simple pack and and boots most especially uh, let me go through some of that all right, to start off is really the, the, the clothing and the attire. If you're coming out day one, what we really just require that you have earth tone clothing. You don't want to show up in something that's bright blue, bright yellow. Um, a lot of people have khaki type color uh, clothing. That, that will actually do. Uh, a brown shirt or something that's earth tone in color. Eventually, you want to get the multicam. Multicam is our standard. I personally like to wear the uh, combat type shirt if you're um, running with a vest, uh, kind of like that. You're going to want something that's a lot more comfortable. So this this is this is really comfortable. It's got you know um, material up front here and more durable sleeves. So that's what I like to run. Um, again, multicam pants. I, I like to run with a dump pouch attached to it. Um, so when we're doing some of our training, you can make sure you you collect your magazines. You don't get it confused with other guys' training. Gloves. Gloves are, are good to have. When you're out in the field and you're doing some training, you duck into some grass, some dirt, and you know you got some you know really heavy rocks, and you know you could pretty nick up your hands and whatnot, and you know. Obviously for training you don't want to do that, but even if it wasn't for training, if it was kind of a long-term incident, you wouldn't want to get any cuts and nicks on your hands because, you know, uh, that can lead to infection and, and that's not something you want. So clothing, to me, the biggest first things. Um, that, a good pack, and some kind of hydration carrier. Uh, you can start off with just simple water bottles. Uh, if you're out training a little bit longer than, than that, you'll realize that that's going to um, uh, get a little tedious because you're, you know, as, you, as we stop to kind of get everybody, you know, during, during our little hikes, you're going to want to hydrate and ha stopping to pull out a water bottle is kind of tedious. So that's why one of these is really good. You can get kind of strap that right over to your shoulder, get that set up so you can just pop it off, take a swig hydrate and then you're good to go hydration is really important and on our on our training and exercises you can most especially during the summer months you can really get to the point where you're you're out of out of hydration and that that can take a number on you been there done that i have a good belt this is a good belt you know obviously it's not black earthy tone as well um so that it's a, it's a good sturdy belt it's also one of these cobra type belts so as I get my gear on, I just snap it right on. I have to, don't have to fumble with um, adjusting or whatever and whatnot. So that's kind of cool. So boots. Boots are, boots are uh, a really important thing. Um, if you're doing a lot of hiking and movement and, and you're with your teams, you're, you're, you're going to want your shoes to hold up in all kinds of terrain. The USMC wrap boots do well. I already have two pairs myself probably get a third pair why not right you can't you you can't ever have two little boots they were running specials on LA police gear but I went to check on it just recently and they're sold out of that there for a while they're running them you know around 35 40 dollars a pair um, now if you want to get them I think they're like 200 dollars a pair um, you know you don't have to get obviously the 200 dollar boots for now you start off with some some solid boots that'll work for you just the you know the mil spec USMC Rat boots are really awesome. I've taken these in all kinds of climate. I've even, you know, gone through some of the water training with them. Uh, they're great. You, know, you get a lot of water in them. They exit out these 
um, these outlets here. So they're they're excellent boots. I suggest that a lot. Packs, simple pack. This is the uh, this is an assault pack. This actually this Coyote Town one actually hooks up to the uh, the newest generation of the ILB packs for the USMC packs um, systems. I got this because the one that came uh, came with my I think it's the first generation one with the older generation pack. It came with, with the um, the different camouflage, but also it was really beat up. I went ahead and got this one. Now you can run with any pack, really. Just make sure it's sturdy, durable. It's not going to rip on you. Um, I, I I used to run with Max Max Edition packs, uh, but I got these just because it 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 um, hooks up really nice to my my um, ILBE pack, um, so I can carry heavy gear here. I've got a place where I can put the the water system and I can also run run through that run that through and just kind of on my shoulders. So a good pack's good to have. Really your start off is you want a good pack, something to hold your water, um, an MRE or some snacks or whatnot and obviously you're gonna get some calories throughout the day for out um, for a good while. Your shoes, definitely your shoes, like I mentioned, and and your clothing, just for starters. That's that's a good start. We also have people train with uh, rifles and sidearms. Um, initially, you want to carry them just to get used to carrying them. So that's also the other thing. If you don't have them, that's not necessary up front. What you're going to learn a lot about is, you know, just how we do things uh, from a recruit perspective. You're just going to learn some really basic stuff. Um, you won't really need this until a bit later, but eventually you're going to want to get your own battle rifle. Um, most of us run with AR-15s, but you know, it could be anything. We got Mini 14s, AK-47s, the whole gamut, whatever. So that's, you know, that's just your personal preference. Uh, you can always debate what's better, what's not, and... Um, you know, have a talk with your your uh, fellow fellow uh, CSM members and get to see what they like and whatnot. I like this Blackhawk drop leg holster because you've got two points of connection, kind of distribute the weight. Um, so that's just my personal preference. Uh, that's not something you definitely have to run with. All right, the vest. This is the vest that I've got, and this is why I like running. I've got places for magazines. Uh, I got my little Kydex, um, really great to get a magazine out and show you, but I got a place where the Kydex actually goes in there so I don't need the bungee wraps. That's really nice because then the magazines come in and out um, and they, they hold securely, but you don't have to fumble with the bungee cords to, to get them out. And again, obviously everything, everything with gear, like I said, you know, clothing, boots, backpack, hydration. That's all you need to start off with. Everything else you should really get out, get on the field with us training, uh, ask us why we run certain gear, um, why we prefer it. I like the Kydex without the bungee because then I can get two in and out of my mags really quickly. I've got this attachment right here for my radio. That puts my radio securely. This is not something you have to get right away, but eventually um, you want to get one of these Baofeng radios. Um, they just really go program. They can pro well, we can program them to our codes and sequences and um, the whole technical communications of it. When you're out and eventually when you're gonna when you're leading a team, uh, and then we expect everybody to get to that point in some time, we can I can connect this um, and I can do the cu communications. This goes through my ear and I can talk through this one. A lot of times when you're out in the field, you don't want to fumble with your radio. So this communication setup is really nice for me. Everybody, you know, to each their own. Um, again, like I said, as you're, as you're training, you'll find out what gear works for you, what doesn't. So before you invest a lot of money, ask, ask around. Ask why they like certain things, what, what works for them, what's not. This thing for me is a, a quick disconnect. It can go from my, um, if I need to, I can go from my drop leg holster up to my chest so I can if I need if I really need to I can mount my uh, my sidearm that way so that's what that is you know if you guys are wondering funny looking Iron Man attachment over there but it's pretty cool um, so anyways that just kind of describes what that piece is let me get that out and 
let's see. Uh, that's pretty much it. I got the, like I said, the radio attachment. I don't have the plates in here now. Um, as we're training, you know, I say train like you fight, so I say put the plates in, but you'll realize when we do some major long hikes or, you know, we're out for a couple of days, if you're out with, uh, if you, know, you start going down the recon route or whatnot, you'll notice that, yeah, those plates are a killer. So definitely train them, get used to them. But honestly, if you're going to go out, you got to make the decision. Am I going to run with my plates or not? Um, you know, you, that's just something uh, every individual has to make a decision. You know, are you going to uh, trade off that load for a little extra protection or not? And that's just something you got to decide. Uh, I got something right here. I got a machete. Uh, this is a, a Gladius uh, configuration machete. Um, I don't have my e-tool, uh, but an e-tool is another good one to have. So right at this point, I'm just going over some other gear that is you're eventually going to build up over time. So right around here is I'm going over some of the basic stuff that I have in my pack. Um, I have a K-bar right over here. Um, I have a lot of my gear packed in these watertight, waterproof type seals. This particular one has everything from my camo uh, makeup application to my toothbrush and my spoon and eating utensils. This yellow one, it's got, I got some toilet paper in here. I've got a tin can for cooking and um, I've got some um, freeze dried foods, foods. This particular pack is just some extra clothing. It's um, an extra pair of pants, an extra pair of shirts and whatnot. Um, this one I throw in my bigger pack. The red one here, I've got ammo in here. Um, we're required to cook, hold at least 100, round, 100 rounds of your, your primary. Um, I, think it's a, I think it's 100 rounds of the secondary. Let me confirm. I think it's second, 100 rounds of that as well, or maybe less than that. Um, not sure. Notebook. You know, obviously a notebook is good to have. I say even if you're not training, you know, if you come across some piece of information you really, really like, notebook's really good to have. Now, I don't have the other one that I really like. I had the um, the weather weather resistant one, which is more durable. It could get wet, get all messed up, and it would still it's pretty pretty solid. But this isn't this isn't it. But and I'm just trying to sh show you that notebook's eventually important. A monocular. Uh, if you, you're new during patrols, you're eventually going to want you know be able to see out further. If you have a rifle like mine's that doesn't have a scope on it, <clears throat> then it's always good to have a little bit more uh, vision out there. I've got some emergency supplies. There's an emergency blanket. That's if I need it. Um, I've got my sleep system over there. Um, uh, so, so that's that. I've got first aid kit. There's a there's a standard uh, how we configure our first aid kits. Uh, we can, probably get that in another video. I've got this this one I just had on along with me for my kids. Um, I typically bring this pack wherever I go so I'll stuff it with all kinds of a lot of this primary stuff in case I ever need them you know um, when I'm out with my family or whatnot. You know, so this always goes back comes with me and then I you know I bring it uh, to training as well. What I have here kind of all wrapped up in this bundle is a Ketadine pocket filter so it's I've used it like once but it's ready to go what's good about the Ketadine is if you run out of your water you've got your water bottles you've got your your bladder filled up for whatever reason you're out there you run out of water you're stuck here and you're at a stream um, you don't want to drink the, the water untreated and, and this has a is a really good way to get you fresh water and refill there so I carry this with me for a lot of stuff like the sh you know, your e-tool and your shovel and your your Ketadine, you you work out work it out with your squad. If you have a particular um, fire team or a squad going out, you you know you, you want to lighten the load. So if one of you's got this, you don't know you don't everybody doesn't have to get it. Um, it's nice to have it if you can carry it, but at the very minimum, you should make sure that your team has at least one water filter going out. Um, 
Yeah, I, th I think that's pretty much it for now. See right down over here, I've got the, um, the IOBE pack, which a lot of my sleep system on the other side goes into. I just stuff it right in there. And a lot of the primary things, normally what goes with me in my assault pack is like the ammo, um, a lot of these minor things, at least one of these uh, freeze-dried foods or an MRE. The, the bigger pack will take extra food, possibly extra water, um, the sleep system, definitely um, extra clothing, and uh, oh, I don't, I didn't take that out, and probably should cover that in a sec. The again, this isn't necessary right away. Knee pads, elbow pads. These come in really handy because when you're low crawling or you dive down into the uh, um, the dirt or into the grass, you, you've been there, done that, gotten to the point, you can even see it's kind of messed up here, gotten to the point where I, I dove into some, um, to some rocks and that, that'll do a number on your knee. This is solid, so that'll protect you. Uh, again, they, you know, if you don't take care of yourself, um, you're not effective if you're injured, so that's kind of what it is. It, it does add extra extra weight. Um, it add it makes it a little bit cumbersome when you move. Uh, obviously, moving without them is the best. But again, you you have to train with them, get used to it, um, and then you know adapt adapt and overcome. Right. So that's pretty much it for now. Um, right over here, I do have some extra rope. And if you notice, I had to, I have a carabiner up there somewhere. It's some climbing gear. Uh, as eventually, you end up getting doing some rappelling, so you're going to end up getting some climbing uh, type gear, uh, as, as well as stuff to create your own Swiss seat and whatnot. So that's eventually something you're going to get, but you can work that over time. I forgot to mention, I got a, I got a, a multi tool right there, and. Um, You know, I forgot to go in here and actually take out more stuff. Compass. This is going to be really important for the land navigation. So this is a lensatic compass. For me, this is tritium. So at night, I don't have to get my flashlight to show. I've got extra this thing so I can create a Swiss seat for myself. Um, what else? And this. This is one. I've used this a lot. Come in very handy. This is your your fire starter, right? So it's a it's a it's a good survival tool, but you know, good to take with you. You know, matches can get messed up, lighters can leak and run out of fuel. Um, this is this is really this is really solid. Uh, has really done really well for me. So that's one of the primary things. So it's always in my uh, assault pack. Again, like I said, my assault pack comes with me pretty much everywhere. Um, kind of a you know the oh you know if anything happens I at least have that with me which contains all the primary stuff my sleep my other pack holds a sleep system and this assault pack I'll cover that in another video attaches really nice to the um, the main pack so that that's that works great for me anyways that's kind of a brief overview like I said um, spent some time training with the militia learn what works for you first so start off with you know, uniform, the boots. Again, like I said, if you want to see what kind of uniform and get a good feel, your first trip out, all you need to do is earthy tone clothing and just show up. And then you can ask the questions from there and build up your gear. So hopefully that helped some of you recruits or just some of your advanced guys are really kind of still building your gear. Again, don't waste your money buying a whole bunch of stuff you won't need because I you know, learned from from experience. I've I've bought a whole bunch of stuff and tossed a whole bunch of stuff, so don't go my route. Um, really learn what truly works for you, um, and what works for others and invest that way. Alright. Thanks for watching guys.